Now this much flow would definitely help you get started but what you ideally need is a flow where you route this traffic not from master but from a staging environment. A lot of people talk about how you can code a website and a lot of tutorials talk about that but usually they end there. In this video, I want to take a step further and tell you about some important things which you should know as a developer in order to deploy a website to your servers in production as a developer. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So for the sake of simplicity, let's assume you're just building a simple create react app project with a node.js backend, a standard mon stack application, right? Let's assume you're doing that. Now, the first thing you will do is of course, code up the application, which is your client here. And the second thing you will have is your server here, right? And most tutorials will actually end up here where they just show you how to connect a client and a server and how you can run it on local host port 3000 and that's it. Maybe you connect to a local host port 8000 where your API server is running, but that's it. Now, how do you take the setup to the production and what are the best practices? Let's discuss that in this video. So the very first thing you have to do is you have to create a repository to store your code on the cloud. Now, why you want to do that? You want to do that because first of all, your system, your laptop is temporary kind of. If you just smash your laptop on the wall, you don't want your website to be just vanished forever, right? Because if you cannot access your server or if you cannot access your code, or even if you're working in a team, you want a central place to be the one where your code is stored and managed and maintained. So what you want as the first process is you want to push this on the cloud somehow and the most popular solution for working with code is using Git. And here also you can choose from GitHub, GitLab. There are a lot of players, but usually a lot of people do prefer GitHub. Now the next thing is that you assign a specific branch here. In, in our case, I can just call it master. If you're not familiar with Git, make sure you check out this course on CodeDAM or on how you can work with Git in general. But if you check out this branch master right here, this master or main branch as some people have started calling it now, this branch right here has a special meaning. Usually, I mean, you can keep any branch as such that when deployed to this branch right here, it goes directly to your server. Now, how does that happen? That happens because there is a process known as CI CD continuous integration and continuous deployment. Now CI CD, these are nothing but actually cloud computers. For example, for GitHub, we have something known as GitHub Actions. So these are cloud computers which build your code in production mode and also deploy it on the server. So what I mean by this, let's say you push your code on Git on let's say a branch called dev, right? You have a CI CD YAML file set up which spins up CI CD server which, which builds your code, right? So it builds your code, that's it. That builds it for the production release because on the dev servers, on the development, you will not be really building production releases because it's slow and it's unnecessary and you don't want a prod release to be running on a dev server. So once this is done, what the server needs to do depends on how your production environment is looking. For some people, it might be just a simple EC2 server, right? You connect this to SSH, this is one way, or you connect this via git push, so you actually initialize a git repository here and push it from here. And the second step is you restart the server itself, right? So restart or reload or whatever you want to do. So this is the flow. You push it to a git repository, the CI CD process run, it builds the server somehow, whatever the steps are, it SSH or git push or, you know, runs a custom action. For example, in case of Vercel, Vercel runs a custom action. So custom bot or action on your hosting provider and it makes that build live on the production. Now this much flow would definitely help you get started but what you ideally need is a flow where you route this traffic not from master but from a staging environment. So let's say you have a staging build where you run the CI CD and this CI CD also contains a bunch of tests right. So these tests actually run on a staging build. So once the CI CD succeeds let's say you have a special staging place, right? Then you run the test, then the tests succeed. So let's say this, these tests, tests succeed, and then you merge it into master or you just directly deploy it on prod, right? So what you're doing here is you push it to a branch 
it builds, it runs the test on that staging environment itself. Now these tests could be end-to-end, -end, they could be unit test or integration test, whatever you want. For unit and integration tests, it's relatively simple. For end-to-end, -end, you have to build a complete environment and publish it, most likely, on a live URL somewhere and then run the test, but it is definitely possible. Finally, if you're deploying this on prod, if you're using a managed service like Vercel or Netlify or anything else, which manages the service for you, you're good enough. But if you're using something like an EC2 instance or some way where you are using a server on your own, then you have to take care of the usual stuff like reloading instead of restarting the application why because you don't want to lose the existing connected clients second of all you want maybe you want to follow a blue green deployment pattern which is some people like some people don't like you should ideally have a reverse proxy set up in front of your servers you should have the standard web security in place rate limiting not trusting user data and so on and you should finally have checks on your service from external provider which emails you or send you a phone sms or some sort of notification if your service is down right this is like important because you want to know when your server crashes not if when it happens because if you're running on a single server chances are sometime down the line you would either run out of disk space or you would sometime be a victim of some sort of attack which will consume your ram or cpu so you want to be aware about that but in other cases if you're using a managed service it's relatively less common but still you should be aware about these things so yeah that's pretty much it i think the most important part here is setting up this flow via git and then via ci cd and then via deployment once you get these three things right all you have to do is enhancement over these three including the test here including some checks here maybe including some flow here but these are these three flows are i think the most important to get right and if you don't have any experience with ci cd i would suggest starting with github actions it's a natively built-in feature into github and can help you just kickstart your continuous integration and development experience for the first time. So this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.